Good afternoon, students. Today we have uh, selected one chapter from book two, that is uh, the open window written by Saki. Saki is his uh, pen name, and his original name is Hector Hugh uh, Munro, and he is uh, a novelist, a story writer. Mostly his writings are on human behavior. In this particular story, he narrates about human behavior in a humorous way. So here, in a dramatic way, he starts the story and uh, he starts this story with a dialogue. The dialogue is, my aunt will be down presently, Mr. Newton, said a very self-possessed young lady of 15. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. So, here in this small sentence you see, that he introduces three characters. That's a girl of 15 and uh, the aunt and Mr. Newton. Here are three characters in the scene and he starts this uh, with uh, a dialogue, my aunt will be down presently. So from this uh, line itself it is understood that Mr. Newton had visited the aunt's uh, house to see her and there he meets uh, the uh, niece or the girl of 15 there the girl of 15 greets him and asks him to wait till the aunt comes and next paragraph you see here Frampton Newton endeavored to say the correct something which should duly flatter the niece of the moment without unduly discounting the aunt that was to come so here, this is the style of writing of Saki that he writes combining so many informations into one. So he says here, and over means try. So he tried to adjust with the girl because, because earlier the girl has asked him to adjust with him, with her. Okay, so he tried himself because there was a generation gap, age gap. There was a great difference in age. The girl was of, girl was of uh, 15 and Mr. Newton was an elderly man. So it becomes very uh, uncomfortable to um, Mr. Newton to adjust with the girl in the absence of uh, the aunt. Okay, what to talk, how to talk. Okay, then it becomes very difficult for Mr. Newton, but he tried his level best to adjust with the girl. Privately, he doubted more than ever whether these formal visits on a succession of a total strangers would do much towards helping the nerve cure which he was supposed to be undergoing. So, again he was doubting whether such visits should be helpful, could be helpful to go there to such a strange place to meet with uh, strange people to get his uh, ailment, illness to be cured. Okay, that means from this uh, it is informed or it is understood that the narrator, okay, or Mr. Newton was undergoing some illness that is of a, a nervous problem. So with this nervous problem, he had gone there to get some solution, some cure to that. Okay, so whether it was quite right or wrong, he could not understand. Okay, he was doubtful. Now, I know how it will be. So he remembers, he recalls some incidents of the past that I know how it will be. His sister had said him said when he was preparing to migrate migrate means go to his uh, to this uh, rural retreat you will bury yourself down there and not speak to a living soul 
and your nerves will be worse than ever from moping. So this is a caution. This is a caution. This is a, a cautioning word or he want his brother okay to go there to such a place when he was getting ready to go there yes so there he thinks whether that was a right to come there or he was wrong okay but what she had want that uh, you will bury yourself that means you will put yourself in trouble okay and not speak to a living soul so there in the retreat there in the village he would not find any such living people that means sensible people okay and there how he would feel he would feel that his illness his ailment was getting worse okay that means in what condition he had come there he will feel worse okay so his conditions will be more uh, critical okay so this is a warning this is a warning from his sister but still she found some solution of this how uh, what i shall just give you letters of introduction to all the people i know there some of them as far as i can remember were quite nice so he says sorry he thinks that his sister was so conscientious and she had given him some names and addresses okay of such people of that village who were very nice very sensible all were not uh, insensitive okay some of them were sensible sensitive so she had given him a list of names and suggested him to go and meet those people particularly those people so that he would feel comfortable okay so he was thinking that uh, on the recommendation of his sister he had come there when he decided to come that place so but he could not uh, sure that whether that was the right decision or a wrong one frampton wondered whether mrs sampleton the lady to whom he was presenting one of the letters of introduction came into the nice division and he was just waiting for the lady to come down okay for whom she he had come there okay and he was eagerly waiting so in this uh, situation there was no discussion the girl was sitting in front of him and front one was also calm he was just thinking thinking and thinking so there was a silence okay there was a silence and the niece the girl of 15 was very much uh, uh, what you can say um, curious to talk to that man and uh, she could not help her uh, talking the man do you know many of the people round here asked the niece when she judged that they had had sufficient silent communion so when that silent was unbearable to the girl she asked okay asked to frampton that do you know many of the people round here so to continue the conversation or to start uh, the conversation she asked asked a casual question whether he had any idea about any people there so frampton say hardly a soul hardly a soul so hardly hardly means not or no okay hardly a soul that means no soul no person he had known to so hardly a soul and again he said my sister was staying here at the rectory you know some four years ago and she gave me letters of introduction to some of the people here okay so hardly he had any idea about any person but according to with the help of uh, his sister he had come there with some names and addresses okay so that was the only knowledge that was the only information he had from his sister okay and 
that was in a regretting manner. Okay, he said regretfully that he had no idea about any people. So he made the last statement in a tone of distinct regret. So it was regrettable to say that he had no idea about any person where he had come. Okay. So it was quite disgusting without knowing any person. Okay. About any person, how one can go to that place? Then you know practically nothing about my aunt. Then the girl of 15 was very sensitive. Okay. And she again asked that that's why it has been told that self possessed girl. Okay, a girl of 15 and a self-possessed girl. Self-possessed girl means who he was, who thinks about himself or you can say self-centered. Yes, so what she wants to know, she very boldly asks, okay, without any hesitation. That is called possessive. So she was asking and Mr. Frampton was replying. Then you know practically nothing about my aunt. Persuaded the self possessed young lady. So, you see how possessive she was. She was asking such questions to the person for which he has to reply. Okay, so here in Frampton said only her name and address admitted the caller. He was wondering whether Mrs. Suppleton was in married or widower state. He had no idea. He had come there with the address name and the address itself. So how could he know about uh, anything about any unknown person? Okay. So, but he was, he had a doubt. An undefinable something about the room seemed to suggest masculine habitation. Again, you see, he was in confusion. He was in doubt whether any masculine, any male member was living in that place, in that house. Okay, so this was the question. So, he, and uh, in such case, with that girl of 15, he cannot ask any such question whether anybody, any male person was living with them, this uh, Mrs. Sepleton and the girl. So, this was also quite uh, ridiculous to ask. That's why he was hesitating, but he had some doubt. Okay, and for that, he never thought of any answer, reply from the girl. Then the girl of 15 says, her great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the child. That would be since your sister's time. So when his sister was living here four years ago, she says that at that, uh, that means the incident of the time that aunt had that uh, a tragedy in her life. Okay, three years ago and Mrs. Uh, Frampton had never expected such story or such incident because he had come there with his own problem. But now when he learns, he learns about uh, the tragedy of uh, uh, his host, uh, he could not stop himself and say, oh, how tragedy? Ask Frampton somehow in this restful country spot uh, Tragedies seemed out of place. So he had never expected such thing to happen. Such a tragedy to happen there. Okay. Because that was so peaceful. Such, such a calm place. Okay. And uh, nobody can expect any such a tragedy there. Yes. So he could not believe. But he said. Then the girl says. You may wonder why we keep that window wide open on an October afternoon. Okay, you see, you must have some doubt, you must have some question in your mind that why we have kept that window open, indicating to a wide open window, the girl of 15 asked, okay, so do you know why we have kept that uh, window open, said the niece indicating a large French window that opened to the lawn. It is quite warm for the time of the year, okay, because that was the month of October. To keep that room warm, they might have kept that window open, so that may be the reason. Okay, and again he asked, but has that window got uh, 
anything to do with the tetrajedi? Is there any connection between these two, the tetrajedi and the open window? He asked curiously. Okay, because she had told about the tetrajedi and uh, the next moment C indicates that window. So there must be some relationship between these two. Okay, so he asked that question. So in reply, the girl says, out through that window, you see, out through that window, she describes, she narrates, okay, about the window. Out through that window, three years ago to a day, on this particular day, three years ago, you see. Okay, this is uh, important to understand that the three years ago, on this particular day, her husband, Mrs. Suppleton's husband and her two young brothers went off for their day's shooting. So, she is narrating an incident that had happened, that is related, that is connected to the tragedy. Okay, and she tells the story that three years ago on that particular day, okay, completely or you can say exactly three years ago, that tragedy had happened with uh, Mrs. Suppleton, that her husband and two brothers had gone for a snipe, for a shooting. They never came back. Okay. They never came back. That was the tragedy. In crossing the moor to their favorite snipe shooting ground, they were all three engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog. Okay, so she narrated, she said about such an incident that anybody could be fear. Okay, any could anybody could feel fearful. Okay, so she said that three people, her husband and two brothers, had gone for a snipe, but they did not return. And what happened to them? They engulfed okay they engulfed in a treacherous piece of bog okay in a bog that means a bog means a wet place bog a wet place engulf enter Okay, enter deep into. Okay, so engulf means enter deep into engulf. Means enter deep into a piece of bog, a wet place. Okay, so they were engulfed. Engulfed into a piece of bog and they did not return. That means they died. They all died. And again he says, it had been that dreadful wet summer and according to the girl, that was a dreadful, fearful, okay, and a shock of that summer. You know, and places that were safe in other years gave way suddenly without warning and nobody can understand what will happen when what will happen. Okay, so nobody can say it is quite unpredictable. It is quite unpredictable that what will happen when. Okay, nobody can say. So she is telling that any day anything may happen with anybody. Yes, and it is uh, quite unpredictable. Their bodies were never recovered. Okay, and their bodies were never found. That was the dreadful part of it. Okay, and that was the dreadful part of it that uh, their bodies bodies were not recovered. Their bodies could not be recovered. It was, this was another part of a tragedy. Now, as she was telling this, okay, so dreadful story about the loss. Here the child's voice lost its self-possessed note and becoming fluttering human. So now, it seemed that she was thinking about somebody. Okay, so that tragedy affected or uh, uh, that means caused so much of uh, 
difference in Mrs. Suppleton. Now she is sympathizing, not thinking about herself. Now she had a sympathy for others. So she was losing her self possessiveness. Okay, possessiveness. Okay, self possessive note and became flutteringly human. Yes, so as a human being, she showed her condolence to uh, Mrs. Sapleton. Poor aunt always thinks that they will come back someday. They and the little brown spaniel. Spaniel means uh, dog. Okay, spaniel means dog that was lost with them and walk in at that window just as they used to do. But poor aunt could not resist that, could not understand that and could not take to be granted. But still she was thinking they are alive. They are not dead. Any time, any day, they could come back. Okay, so she could not uh, um, believe that that happened with uh, these people, that they are dead. She was thinking that they are still alive and she was feeling and uh, she was uh, thinking, she had a hope uh, that they would come any day, any moment through this window as they had gone. Clear? So that was the pity. That was the sympathy for uh, Mrs. Sackleton because she had gone mad. She could not uh, believe or she could not accept the reality that her uh, husband and two brothers could not come back again, okay, anymore. But she could not understand this. That's why she had some sympathy for the woman, for the lady. That's why the window is kept open every evening till it is quite dusk. So that is the reason behind opening the sorry, keeping that uh, window open. So, when she told about the reason, she told a big story about the loss. Yes. Poor dear aunt, she has often told me how they went out, her husband with his white over uh, waterproof coat over his arm and Ronnie, her youngest brother, singing pretty, why do you bow? So she narrated each and every incident or the memory that was attached to these three people. So often aunt Mrs. Suppleton was uh, uh, describing or uh, remembering such incident that how they had gone and when they had gone, what they had worn, okay, and how they behaved, how they sang, how cheerful they were when they had gone. So everything she was talking and she was discussing very often. Okay. And as he always did to tease her because she said it got on her nerves. Getting on her nerves means getting on once nerves getting in getting on one's nerves means uh, it is uh, about uh, can't forget anything okay that means here because he said it got on her nerves so that became a part of uh, her life Okay, or you can say she was moved. Okay, she was moved by this uh, incident. Okay, that means she could not believe other things than this, that they were still alive. Yes. Do you know something on still? Still means quiet. Quiet evenings like this. I almost get a creepy feeling that they will all walk in through that window. And another, another thing she is narrating to Mrs. Sepplet, sorry, Mr. Neutral that sometimes such feelings were felt that somebody 
was walking through that window in creepy in creepy movements creepy feelings that means somebody was walking and footsteps were heard and this was the feeling when nobody was there still the footsteps were heard then that is a creepy feeling okay so it was felt awful okay so this atmosphere has become such a fearful such thrilling that nobody can deny nobody can ignore because that story was so uh, tragic and you can say so thrilling that mr sapleton sorry mr newton was uh, thinking something to change the topic okay so because that uh, story had uh, made that environment such a thrilling one okay so she broke off with a little shudder she broke off with a little shudder it was a relief to from turn when the aunt bustled into the room with a will of apologies for being late in making her appearance that she was uh, Mr Frampton was so feared that he was just waiting for Mrs Aunt okay Mrs Sapleton to come so that the topic will change or he could he could understand or he could feel better and he could change the topic because it was quite uh, unbearable for him okay that's why she broke off with a little shudder it was relief for from turn so when she came into the uh, scene mr from turn felt somehow relieved okay and when mrs sapleton came into the scene she had so many uh, apologies with her that she was late and uh, from turn had to wait uh, for a long time yes so this is all about our first unit we will uh, discuss in our next uh, part the concluding part of the story thank you thank you very much